Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Picklet here once again and I'm back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for more Let's Play of the forms of Kirby's Epic Yarn for the Nintendo Wii. So last time we actually did manage to fully completely done with the forms of Grassland World, and we've managed to gather every single treasures, including these medals among the way, by the forms of every single gold medals as a result. And today for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that before we take on the forms of uh, World 2, which is known as uh, Heartland, I must be able to actually go ahead and um, anticipate by the forms of one of those uh, minigame challenges. Well, not the minigames, but just challenges all by itself. So here we go with uh, the Seeky's uh, Hide and Seek uh, challenges. So obviously the first level we're going to be jump into with the forms of this particular challenge, and that will have to be Felton Gardens. Now, as far as the actual challenge applies, it's the fact that obviously we need to find all five of those um, Zikis here. And every time you find one, then you weren't able to find another one. So, self-explanatory though really for the most part though, but even then though, you always have to be able to actually keep an eye out. Because even then, um, as long as you do not pay attention to the actual environments uh, close enough, then you weren't able to actually find those guys no problem. So... And if you can tell already that um, it's also very easy for most of those challenges, but as you proceed to the forms of the later levels that when we're able to actually unlock them and join them later down the road, um, you can expect it how, the, uh, how the fact that most of these challenges can get a little bit more difficult as you progress. See even then though that, well, if you probably already know about that until when we ever when we get to, you know, World 3 and onwards, but even then though, we'll... See what happens there. I, I do apologize if my voice is going a little bit more awkward at little one point or another. That's only because I just always keep on belching myself, which I know is terribly disgusting. But even then, I do apologize for that point, folks. Um, another thing I just want to point things out right away is that whenever I decide to able to actually do these kinds of challenges, first of all, before we get into the forms of Hotland. Um, now, as far as you're already aware, now the fact of the matter is though, is the fact that every time you complete one of those challenges is that, as you can see, that um, Ziki is trying to tell us about the fact that the new stage has been unlocked. So since we're done with all that, then we should able to actually classify to able to not only give us the forms of a new fabric, which is the blue sky fabric, in addition to that though, we got ourselves this guy to pop up. Wait, wait, Prince Fluff, Lord Kirby, I was just looking for the two of you. I'm actually in need of a small favor. I would like to add a floor to the building, but I don't have enough beads. Or how much beads you want. Do you think you could bring me, oh, I don't know, say 10,000 beads? Okay, I'll accept that. Oh, wonderful, just wonderful. What I would I do without you two? I'll be waiting outside, so just come and talk to me when you have the beads. So yes, basically, uh, we need to, in order to actually just, uh, also we need to able to complete 100% completion of this game, is the fact that every time you actually collect enough beads, uh, you would able to actually upgrade yourselves to your next floor. But I can't do that just yet though, because obviously I'm going to be doing the next challenge. And this usually takes place in the forms of, well, Rainbow Falls. So, I believe uh, most of these uh, secret stages won't be able to be counted whatsoever until when we actually get to the later levels of the game. Like, in the forms of how it does it in the later portion of it, that's what I meant to say. But even then, no, we're not going to get into more now as we're able to proceed to this game. So, yeah, I do apologize for the actual two-day delay because uh, recently able to coming back to this actually uh, because recently that Knuckles the Echidna is about to be now going to be doing his let's play of the forms of Pac-Man Party recently so at the moment that we've only hold up for 13 let's plays at the moment which sure I do we really do apologize if we actually still hold up for those let's plays for quite a long time but even then though don't worry we'll finish those in during a couple of times worth noting for especially when it gets to like Sometime in 2020 or onwards, but even then, now that could be saying much. So anyway, a few things I just want to explain about this naturally is the fact that, uh, speaking of which, when it comes to our, our YouTube channel so far, um, we've actually managed to claim ourselves by the forms of I don't know, I don't know if we actually just managed to mention about this, but 
Hey, please we've managed to get ourselves 200 subscribers recently. Well, to be more accurate, 201 subscribers, which is very, very awesome if you ask me. I wonder if we can able to do a biggest event for 200 subscribe special, but I think I can't plan this out right about now. I think we should able to plan this out until whenever when we get to November sometime. Perhaps the most, uh, famously, is the forms of, you remember back in the forms of 2013, that, uh, you know, the, uh, two Teddy, uh, uh, characters, including Daffy and Sylvester, managed to able to actually tackle one of those multiplayer games on Super Monkey Ball 1, both, uh, Monkey Target and Monkey Golf, and especially noticeable with Monkey Bowling, which is by far the most popular video in our channel so far, and, uh, I wonder if we're how we can able to actually just to redo those again, but this time playing on Super Monkey Ball Deluxe on the original Xbox version, and because of that, I uh, will decide to make the quality even much more nicer, and I think we can able to actually accept also with the widescreen support. So even then, uh, as you probably expected at this point, we're going to be playing it on the Xbox 360 version, but even then, again, we'll have to wait and see what happens there, but even then, though, until when a day comes, so... Just wait your patience, and that's all I have to say about this. But yeah, as we move along to the next couple of levels with the forms of the Sea Keys, uh, hide and seek challenges, then in more difficult it pro um, proceeds or even progress. So, as you might expect it from any other games out there, especially with this game's case. So, that concludes that for now on, uh, for now on anyway. But it wasn't until when we get to the future worlds that we could able to unlock more of those. Uh, Ziki's challenges and all that stuff, so... Anyways, let's go ahead and give him, uh, 10,000 beats, and as soon as we actually accomplish that, then we would able to actually upgrade our building for now. Well, at least in this case, another floor to the building, so... Even though there's no construction or anything like that, it just gets it all by itself, as you can see there. And now we can actually have ourselves a ladder with it, I'm presuming for this matter. So even though we've already got access to the forms of two another floors, which... At the moment, um, I think I might, I think I can't do that right about now, other than that though, because even then though, I might as well be able to save that in a later time, especially when we actually get into the next world of the game actually, just about right about now, and in fact, we'll go ahead and get into the forms of Heartland. You can either walk on foot, or my personal favorite is that if you press the minus button, in the forms of the actual map button, you can just simply just able to actually jump into world to world, and that's the only thing I do really like. So anyways, welcome to World 2, Hot Land, as you expect it, is a desert theme level, so... Yeah, as you might expect it, because even now it's the second world of the game. So here we go, on to the first level in Hot Land, because obviously the desert itself is very, very hot in reality. And, uh, yeah, you can definitely know the drill here. So here we go, with Pyramid Sands as the first level in Hot Land. As far as this level's gimmicks goes, is the fact that we actually come towards the quicksand. Now, we've technically already saw the, uh, the quicksand ever since in Mole Hill, one of those secret levels in Grassland, but uh, this is actually the first time properly that we can able to actually introduce those quicksands for the first time. And basically, what it does is just basically, it just keeps alternating between uh, two different colors of the forms of the actual yarn itself. And by the way, before we get to this, Harper, though, if you come across into those particular mummies, as you can see there, they're usually almost like a shape like a, uh, well, a gems bag. Uh, be sure to able to use the projectile, and then you would able to obtain as plethora of, um, beads as possible. So, yeah, I should definitely recommend doing that. And as you can see, we've got ourselves a camel sofa. So, there goes the job done. So, once again, there are still some three treasures to be found here, and uh, as far as later levels, as far as this is concerned with, especially notice of all that, I've already mentioned about this in Junior Likes of in being, uh, Big Bean uh, Vine level, that um, most of those treasures, well, not so much in the first treasure, because you always get the first treasure from the start, but whenever it gets in at some levels, mainly due to how the fact that you always get the CD from the second treasure, and some of those levels will actually save the CD for last, and, uh, that could be the same applies for the second treasure as well, like, it just keeps alternating between, uh, whatever, what levels you're gonna be going to next, and then next thing you notice is how the fact the matter is, though, that you would able to actually realize that most of those treasures can be a little bit more odd positioned, so, I digress, so we have ourselves an estimation mark, um, spot, and in fact, it's gonna guide us all the way, um, 
Well, not that far from here though, I would have hoped. I should probably point things out right away though, is the fact that, uh, one thing I forgot to mention about this, um, this might actually be my last Kirby Let's Play I'll do from now on though, for this, le uh, for this year. Because, um, since 2019 is getting closer at this point, and we got Cactus Juice. That's a weird juice, I will say that much. Um, in order to actually deal with those, uh, particular spiky ball looking obstacles, I suggest you're able to use the, uh, the projectile until you're able to defeat them as, um, ever will be. And then that way you can able to grab as many of those beads as possible. So, that's the easiest way I feel like. So, and, um, yeah, because I decided to able to actually just say this right now, that, um, Kirby's Epic Yarn might be the last Kirby Let's Play as far as this year's goes. Because, don't worry, we've still got a plethora of Kirby games to tackle through, like the forms of, uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra for the Nintendo DS, and especially noticeable with the forms of, uh, Kirby's Adventure Wii, aka, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, and Kirby Triple Deluxe, Kirby Planet Robobots, and the forms of the latest games in the series, by the forms of, uh, well, Kirby Star Allies. Um, and, uh, I'm probably not gonna do Kirby Battle Royale, because it only has, like, one save file, so I'm probably not gonna go for that one, uh, for that game. And plus, uh, I know for some people usually think that this is pretty much a, somewhat of a mediocre game at its best. Well, at least as far as that's most likely concern of. In fact, you know, still, between the forms of Kirby Battle Royale, and especially noticeable with the forms of Mario Party The Top 100, they both share the exact same score reviews, but the forms of critics alike. And I don't know about fans though, because even then though, that is entirely up to their own opinion. But I know critics did manage to able to get their own opinions as well. So, I digress. Oh jeez, how am I supposed to get those beats from here? Um, even though that we've already got ourselves a gold medal, so... Uh, whatever. I'm probably not gonna go after those anyway, so... Anyways, here we have ourselves another introduction to the next transformation we have this time around, is the forms of the motor vehicle. And basically, what I found is kind of odd though, is the fact that unlike in Mario Kart Wii, that you normally have to hold down the 2 button to accelerate. But in this, you have to hold down the 1 button until you actually accelerate. So, because the reason why they're doing that is because, well, obviously we have to make sure the 2 button is actually the jump button. So, I think they get their suggestions for this point here, because this is a 2D platformer game, rather than just a 3D platformer or anything like that. But, hey, at least I don't mind about it too much. So, and also, this could be somewhat, uh, this could be summarized as the forms of a race syndrome, because even then, uh, the ultimate goal for this is the fact that whoever managed to able to make it to the ver uh, at the very end of the finishing line wins. And um, also, there's actually a CD right there. And uh, that particular guy right there on the forms of that blue car always gets in first place. So, all you have to do is basically, you need to be exactly perfect on it. Because if you mess up at least once or twice, then you might as well be able to actually go for second or third place. If you manage to get first place, as you can see there, then you get a crap ton of beats. And uh, if you manage to get, like, silver or third place position, then you get less of an amount of beats. So, that's how the system works. So, yeah, that's it for Pyramid Sands. So, please give me a big reward. Oh, what? Oh, dang it. I was so close. I was really so close to get that big reward. Nah, whatever. Nothing matters anyway, though, because we've already got a gold medal to begin with, in addition to those three treasures that we've collected. So, I think we should be able to be just as fine. And speaking of which, we got ourselves the magic lamp patch. So, and we've actually unlocked the next level of any sorts for, um, you know, the Ziki's uh, Hide and Seek uh, particular challenge. But I'm not going to get into that just yet, though. And let's summon the genie as far as the wish. I wish to proceed. Thank you very much. Even though that I've only have like two wishes left. I could kind of wish I can able to make my own one for it, but it forms of those two wishes I can wish for. Like the forms of, uh, just crap ton of cash, or just pretty much everything. Alright, so the next level we have, as you can see there, Lava Landing. And as you probably can tell, it's basically a lava themed level. And just like in forms of how it does in any other lava themed levels, in the forms of any other video game dramas out there, uh, if you touch by the lava, then you'll be essentially gonna get hurt a lot. So, 
Yeah, I've got a bad feeling about this, but apart from that though, it's pretty self-explanatory if you know what you're doing. And especially noticeable if you want to able to go after every single treasure, or even just trying to get yourself a gold medal of all things. So, yeah, I guess that makes it obvious there. And right here, um, you know these little crash bomber uh, type of enemies, they are back in full force, just like how it does it from before. Except the fact that you, you can't, you can no longer perform a screen nuke of all things, which is a crash ability, because, you know, uh, copy abilities is nowhere to be able to use. So instead, you can able to actually use these guys to able to actually act out as bombs. Like, in order to actually just manage to able to activate the bombs, you have to simply just hold down the one button, and that's all you have to do. And uh, basically, the bombs can do is the fact that it can actually break solid blocks. So, very self-explanatory for the most part, though, when it comes to these guys. Don't run onto them, because even though no, that also might as well count as the explosion, so... Just be very careful, though, especially with the actual lava environments itself, so... Oh, boy. Okay, you can also manage to grab those uh, fireball projectiles whenever they burst out, and then you can be able to act out as a projectile when you're grabbing it. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, the basic gimmick of this level, as you can see there, is the fact that every time you see this little mini volcanoes of all any kind, and you would able to actually see there's a little knob right there where you can able to actually simply just close it. But it doesn't last very long though, it only lasts for about, like, let's just say, 5 seconds. And then, um, if 5 seconds is up, uh, what, what happens is, though, is the fact that, um, the actual volcano will start to interrupt it again. So, here's the first treasure, Stone Lamp. And, speaking of which, there's another treasure involved, which appears to be, um, well, first of all, we need to able to deal with the forms of these, uh, crushed bomber enemies, as you can see there. Well, I'm very glad for because of how the fact that those enemies are going to make it as an appearance on the faults of the item usage from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, so at least I do appreciate it with that particular stuff in mind. So anyways, let's see in this treasure chest here, we got a cartoon meat. <laughs> no wonder why I just calls it that, but I digress. And this is kind of cool that uh, Kirby can be able to navigate by the forms of those narrow holes, as you can see there. But because he was actually made in yarn, that means he can actually go through many gaps as possible. And talk about that tradition, here we have another new transformation. But this time we have is the Fire Engine Kirby. Which, I will admit though, it looks very very adorable when it comes to looking at that. And very awesome at the same time as well. Uh, basically, you maneuver around with the directional pad, as always. And you, um... Press the one button and two able to activate the hose, and you can able to actually press the two button to jump as you expected. But here's the thing though, you need to tilt the Wii remote in a corresponding direction if you manage to able to aim your the forms of the actual like, you know, the actual hose itself. Which is very cool, because even then though, you can actually aim this thing whatever as much as you want it to. Uh, the only noticeable exception is downward, and especially noticeable with, uh, you know, just diagonal, or you can do diagonal from the forms of uh, upper right or upper left, but you can't do uh, like bottom left or bottom right. So I guess it that makes it very obvious because um, ho hose can usually just manage to detach the forms of the fire engine, of course, especially like you know. I do love the music on this level actually, but even then though, oh god, we got ourselves this sequence here. Um, as you can tell, as soon as we reach to this point here, then the volcano is going to interrupt and it's going to be rising up. See, but then we need to make our way all the way up to the top and, and uh, you know, just hopefully hope for the best. And just trying to not to lose as many bees as possible. But if you do, on the other hand though, then, you know, you might as well be able to lose them anyway. And I'm probably not going to go after every single bees because I'm mostly concentrated on the informs of, uh, well, let's just say the, uh, the third and the final treasure, in addition to those, uh, end-level medals. So, I think that's why it makes it very obvious for that point. So, anyways, let's aim this, uh, crash bomber up to the top here. And just trying to unwhip that. And we can able to move on. And, uh, I realize there's the third and final treasure just right here. So it's not that far from here though, I don't think, but I, we got ourselves a CD for the lava landing. So, yeah, everything else all inject all together, so anyways, let's go ahead and just finish up the level off. So we need to just keep doing this, and as soon as we're able to reach up to that certain point up here, and we could potentially finish up the level as we expected. So let's go ahead and just- NO! Ah, shoot! Oh, that was a waste. That is such a waste. 
In fact, there's no way I can able to go back up at that point or go down there. Uh. So yeah, this is what happens if you manage to able to uh, get hurt by certain projectiles or even lava environments as a result for this matter. Uh, you lose all of your beads. Well, most of them anyway, though, but even then, uh, I just cannot believe how that happens to me. So there goes the first, um, let's just say the first hit of the actual Let's Play of it so far. Even though, that again, there was no extra lives to be seen around here. But even then, though, that it's alright, because even then, though, that, well, the game itself is way too easy, though. Alright, so now we've got ourselves the Boxing Bell patch. And now we can able to actually uh, place that and just manage to activate the next level's gonna open for us. So let's see how this will interact. Man, I like that. Especially noticeable with the forms of cinematics like this. From here, we can actually access to the forms of Cool Cave. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, as far as I'm aware, this level can go really, really long at this point, but even now, I'm sure I can able to finish this, this level, like, about under 9 minutes or 8 minutes or something, roughly. I think I remember this level whenever I managed to able to watch some of these YouTube channels out there, that, um, specifically the Co-op Let's Plays back in 2010, that, uh, one of those, um, players, well, two of them to be exact, well, at least one of them was concentrating throughout, like, the forms of, uh, well, I forgot to mention about this, is the fact that, um, uh, one player can able to take control as Kirby, obviously, for one player, and for two-player mode, he can simply just able to take control of, uh, Prince Fluff, which, sure, his abilities might play out exactly like the one for, for Kirby, except with, uh, you know, he, Prince Fluff is blue, instead of the usual pink. So, I think that's the only noticeable difference between, uh, both Kirby and Prince Fluff, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, as I was saying, I still remember that long time ago, whenever I haven't got the game yet, and then I've managed to watch the, uh, the actual Let's Play of the forms of Kirby's Epic Yon, and one of those levels they did have a trouble with, and now will have to be the forms of this level. And this one makes the reason why that a lot of people seem to think that most of these levels, or even I feel like, that most of the levels later on, can get pretty tough in some of those mechanics are. Even then, I will get to that as soon as we get to that. So here's the first treasure in this level. We have the crystal. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention about to you guys about stuffing is that unfortunately, though, that um, uh, might as well, uh, we might as well able to do our redo let's plays of both Super Mario Galaxy the original. And not only that, I might as well able to actually we might as well able to actually decide to do a redo let's play of Super Mario Galaxy 2. I'm afraid. I think the reason being for that is because well. The qualities themselves, especially in Super Mario Galaxy 2, is very, very good. Well, at least in terms of Luigi's playthrough on Super, Lu Super Mario Galaxy, the first one, but uh, not so much for the Mario's playthrough. So I thought to myself, well, I felt bad for myself because even then, though, that uh, um, the thing is, I've managed to ab we've managed to able to waste all of our views at the at one point or another because we've almost had uh, 20,000 views, which is ridiculously big, but even then I could have imagined of how the fact that until a few years time, then we would able to get a crap ton of views, especially noticeable with the forms of the most popular video out there, for now on anyway, from our YouTube channel, but it forms of, you know I mentioned this before, Super Monkey Ball, but not, uh, Super Monkey Ball, Monkey Balling Mode, so, yeah, I think the reason why a lot of people seem to have found that very enjoyable, unlike in most of our videos anyway, though, of the most current ones, is the fact that I'm kind of assuming because of the comedy, or just pretty much something else. By the way, if you manage to able to actually unweld the forms of those bats, by the way, you can able to actually activate as a three projectile shot, which is very handy, though. So I digress. But yeah, I still remember this level because of, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before. Um... There's one kid that he managed to able to get a lot of raging because he goes like, Why? And then he just goes like, really, really, oh god, raging. But even then though, that, and the other person is like, Don't look at me, don't look at me, I, I didn't do anything. But even then though, I remember that a long time ago. But unfortunately though, I haven't really found that in during the likes of this time and go forth. I'm thinking because... I don't know, the videos might as well be able to be de uh, deleted all by itself, or maybe because they're moving on to the next life. 
Well, if you guys should know what I'm talking about, funny from I I don't know if anyone know what I'm talking about, but I'm just making it as a compliment anyway. So, oh god, that was red. Ah, oh, shoot! Thanks a lot. Uh, speaking of range here, um, this level can get pretty tricky sometimes, even especially noticeable when there's like uh, too much stuff is gonna screw you over no matter what in some scenarios. Like first of all. Uh, these enemies right there, the ones they managed to spew out the forms of these blue fireballs, which reminds me of those, uh, spirit horrors for some reason from Lucario. And, uh, what makes these guys a little bit more of a picky to deal with right here, is the fact that they always appeared like almost at the narrow spots, which I was trying to able to actually just trying to deal with them, but unfortunately that's not the case here, so... Oh well, nothing matters. But anyways, let's go up here to get another star bead. Honestly, I think a single player experience might be a better thing in my opinion, unlike any forms of the uh, two player co-op system. I think the reason being for that is because there are, there's going to be plenty of times where too many people seem to get screwed over by the forms of um, they don't know what they're doing and all that stuff. I know I'm pretty much professional about this kinds of stuff, but I don't normally play uh, cooperative games like this, even though there's one game in particular why I still haven't owned at this point, but it forms of Ratchet and Clank all for one, and uh, basically it's all about uh, cooperative uh, gameplay experience, which can be the same applies for the forms of this game, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Ah, oh, shoot! I did it too early! Oh, God, I just managed to able to did that too early. Hey. Oh, well. But on the plus side though, we got ourselves these beats back. And it looks like we definitely need that projectile to just manage to destroy that solid block. And see what's in here. Of course we have ourselves the end level disc. I always call them that. Because, get it? Because, you know, um, pieces or just discs itself. So, I digress. So today was actually forms of uh, the 4th of September, so even then though, that's still, we've only got about, um, I would say, uh, 31 days to go until Super Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch is about to be released. So, still I'm looking forward to that though, especially if most of our fans out there are really looking forward to that because I'm so looking forward to able to actually play as a lot of characters. In fact, Probably one of the biggest roster in the forms of any other Mario Party game ever since Mario Party 8. Well, technically Mario Party Star Rush might count, but it's just as one of those additional characters in some of those modes exclusive. But I digress. So here we go with the forms of that sequence here. Obviously we have the Mole Kirby transformation, which we technically already come across into in the forms of uh, Mole Hole. But uh, if you have a first time playing this game and able to experience this level, then yeah, this might be your first time you're going to be seeing that. Uh, well, yeah, because I'm going to explain this again, that um, you press the 2 button to jump and press 1 to just dig through everything. In the forms of this little fluffy part, Seriously, I really love this presentation of the game, it's so fantastic. Because everything else is made out of, like, material base, which is very, very awesome. I wonder if, uh, although y um, Yoshi's Woolly Walls does the exact same thing as well, but even then though, except it makes a little bit more dynamic feel to it. Like, everything else is in almost like a 3D vibe. And, uh, anyways, uh, before we end off the level right there, uh, I should probably point things out right away. Try to go up, because if you go down, you'll probably be bypassing that particular treasure easily. So, here we have the Frog Mirror. And that's pretty much it, but the forms of Cool Cave. So, let's go ahead and finish off the level up. And, I think I might actually done that too early again. Yeah, I did that too early. I, I think at this point, I think it might be very, very difficult for me to able to actually aim that god dang red start section right there. Oh man. But there we go, we've managed to accomplish like, uh, let's just say three levels so far, in the forms of Worlds 2. But don't worry, we'll finish up the rest of the forms of Worlds 2 in the next video, because as you can see, as you can tell from the actual time length, um, I'm basically running out of time. But before we're able to finish this off, We'll go ahead and toss the actual flame patch, as you can see there, to able to actually just manage to cook this actual meat. Just like how it does in a pure historic times. And speaking of which...
And he ate all the entirety of the meat, all in one go. <laughs> Could do it like a few bites next time, but I digress. But you're still cute though. So I digress, we're gonna have to end things off here for this point, I'm afraid, guys. So join me next time, and let's play Kirby's Epic Yarn. It's the fact that we're gonna be taking on the next level in the forms of Heartland, and that will have to be Dino Jungle. So see you guys then. Later, fellas.